right, it is time once again for this week's edition of Todd's Odds. With that, let's bring in our betting expert, Todd Furman himself, brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. And Todd, we're going to get to football. I know you guys like to talk about football here on the show, but I want to ask you about hockey first because we've already had a ton of offense early on in this season. So I want to ask you about the Rocket Richard odds. We have come into Thursday three names that are shorter than plus 1,000. We have Austin Matthews, followed by a pair of Oilers and Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. But do you see any value yet in anyone maybe a little lower down on the board? I mean, I think, Kara, this graphic's a giveaway because there's one name that sticks out right there like a sore thumb, and it's the man all the way at the bottom with a price tag of 80-1 to 1 and Alex Dabrinkit, who has taken to his new surroundings in the Motor City like a fish to water as a line mate alongside Dylan Larkin and Lucas Raymond. Look, Alex Dabrinkit was never scratching the surface last year as a member of the Senators, but he started to regain some of that goal-scoring prowess. And he's going to be given every opportunity for Derek Lalonde's bunch to be one of the key cogs up front. Larkin is the ultimate facilitator. Dabrinkit going to log meaningful minutes on that first power play grouping as well. And while I don't think he ultimately goes on to win this award, that price tag of 80 to 1, too hard for me to ignore, knowing to your point that so much of the odds equity is placed in the top three names that it gives us a little bit of wiggle room. I'll take a flyer on the new member of the Red Wings and Alex Dabrinkit. Yeah, I'm with you. He may or may not have already won me a little bit of money on Wednesday night, so I'm all over the Alex Dabrinkit as well. Uh, let's get to football now. And Todd, I want to ask you about this tweet from earlier in the week. You had the stat after six weeks under in the 92 games played this season. We're 56 and 36. Why do you think that is? And is there maybe a correction coming? I mean, the guy that tweet you're showing is a real hack. So I wouldn't take a lot of what he says all that seriously. But in terms of the actual empirical data, I, there are a couple of reasons why I think scoring is down so far this year in the NFL. When you look at the penalties on the defensive side of the ball, we've seen defensive pass interference really decline. And those penalties that are good for 40 or 50 yard chunks of points are becoming defensive holding or illegal contact, which are of the five-yard variety. The other thing we're seeing from a lot of defenses is they're forcing their opposition to be methodical, taking the profit, so to speak, with a short, controlled passing game, more so than hunting the explosives over the top. And we talk about the NFL all the time. It's a true copycat league. You saw a lot of defenses adopt a too-high safety look in terms of slowing down Patrick Mahomes, and more and more teams are doing that. They're moving the football with regularity between the 20s. But just like the Baltimore Ravens in London last week, six trips to the red zone, they came away with seven one time. And that lend its, lends itself quite nicely to the under. But it's also buyer beware. The NFL market is about as efficient as you're going to find in sports betting. So odds makers aren't going to continue to inflate these totals if we continue to see teams settling for threes instead of scoring seven. Okay, we've talked a lot about the MVP race in the NFL, but let's talk about Coach of the Year. Currently, Dan Campbell of the Lions is leading the way, followed by the Dolphins' Mike McDaniel. So, do you see a name you maybe would like to throw a little money on after six weeks? You know, those two guys are definitely worthy favorites. I mean, the Lions, a much maligned franchise that may end up having the division clinched in the NFC North by American Thanksgiving, given what the Bears, the Packers, and Vikings aren't doing to provide legitimate threats. Mike McDaniel is the architect behind a high-flying offense, but I do think there's a little bit of noise in those numbers when you look at playing the Carolina Panthers, the New York Giants, and Denver Broncos to pad those stats. So I'll look at a coach at 30-1 to 1 that I think has a chance to win his division, and that would be Kevin Stefanski. I know he brought in Jim Schwartz as defensive coordinator, and that's paying dividends, at least early on in the campaign, with the Browns on a historic pace to do things that we haven't seen since the Ravens at the turn of the century. But at the same time, they're doing it despite not getting a ton of productivity out of the man they gave a massive contract to. If this offense gets on track under Deshaun Watson, they're able to win the division. I wouldn't be opposed to having a 30 to 1 flyer on Kevin Stefanski in the portfolio. Yeah, Stefanski might have to buy Jim Schwartz a very nice steak dinner should he win that award this year. Finally, it is way too early to talk about Super Bowl picks. With that being said, do you have a Super Bowl pick for winner? <laughs> You know, it's amazing, Carrot. Jay's in that seat most weeks when we do this. Apparently, you're picking up right where he left off. I'm going to give you the exact same answer I've given him since the Thursday night game that started the season between the Lions and Chiefs. I do not have a Super Bowl winner. I do not have a future in that portfolio. I'm getting closer, but every time I get on that first and goal situation, I just can't punch it across the goal line. So you know what? All of our viewers are going to have to come back and wait till next week till hopefully I have a resolution for this question. See, I told Jay that I wouldn't be able to get it out of you either, but maybe around week 11, 12, we'll see if we have 
a hard pick. Just so you know, I am a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I appreciate and love you can send Pittsburgh's way. Thanks for this, Todd. Uh, always a pleasure, Karen.